Hello everyone, welcome to Students Point. So we are continuing with the Indian polity and in this video we will see the second part of first chapter that is historical background of Indian polity. And this series will be relevant for all the exams including IS prelims exam, PCS prelims examinations of any state, EPFO 2020, CDS, SSC or any other examinations. So without delay let's begin but before that if you are finding my videos useful do like it and share the video with your friends and loved ones. And also press the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you receive all the notifications at the earliest to learn and grow every day. Let's begin but before that you have to answer one question in the comment section. Based on the teachings of last day I have taken this question. The question is who was the first governor general of India? These are the options. If you have read in the last video very carefully then you must be answering it. Read the options carefully and answer it. Let's begin now. So last day we have seen Regulating Act of 1773, then we have dealt with Pete's India Act of 1984, then we dealt Charter Acts and the last Charter Act we have seen was 1853. Because of several socio-economic political reasons and exploitation of Indian masses by colonial masters. So thereafter the revolt of 1857 happened and then British government realized that a substantial change in the governance of India is necessary and need of the hour. Then only British government or British empire could be continued in India thereafter. So British parliament passed Government of India Act 1858. And after that several Indian Councils Act and Government of India Act were passed which subsequently improved governance in the country. So this that is why this Government of India Act 1858 is called as Act for Good Government of India. This tried to take several steps by abolishing the East India Company, taking the control of India directly into the Crown's hand and several other initiatives. So we will see everything in detail. Apart from this, we will see Indian Council Act of 1861, then we will see Indian Council Act of 1892, then we will see Indian Council Act of 1909, thereafter Government of India Act of 1919 and thereafter the last Indian Government Act or Government of India Act 1935. Thereafter, India achieved the independence. Constituent Assembly was created, which formally adopted, enacted the Constitution of India. Thereafter, we will see the salient features of Constitution and we will move ahead now. And that is why there is division of British Empire in India into two. That was the Company Rule and then the Crown Rule. Company Rule lasted till 1857 before the revolt. And after the passage of Government of India Act, company was abolished and Crown took the control of India. That is why the period from 1858 till 1947 is termed as the Crown Rule. So we are now entering into the Crown Rule. Crown Rule here, the Majesty, that is the Monarch of United Kingdom. So let's begin. So this Government of India Act of 1858, which is also called as the Act of Good Government of India, abolished the East India Company transferred the powers of government, territories, revenues to the British Crown. We have seen this and it changed the designation of Governor General of India to that of Viceroy. Charter Act of 1833 changed the designation of Governor General of Bengal to Governor General of India. So 1883 Charter Act changed the designation to Governor General of India while this 1858 Act changed this designation to Viceroy and Viceroy was to be the direct representative of the British Crown in India. So who was the first Viceroy of India? So it was Lord Canning who became the first Viceroy of India and it created a new office called as Secretary of State for India. The Secretary of State was to be a member of British cabinet and he was to be responsible ultimately to British Parliament and not to any Indian Council. Remember this fact very important. This Secretary of State was to be responsible only to the British Parliament. And the Act gave Secretary of State complete authority and control over Indian administration. And a 15 member council was also created. This 15 member council was to assist Secretary of State for India and the council was an advisory body only. This body can only, only advise to Secretary of State and the sole decision was taken by Secretary of State and he was direct, directly responsible to British Parliament. And Secretary of State was made the chairman of this 15-member council. However, this act which is so called 
the act of good government of india 1858 faces criticism because it did not alter or bring any change in any substantial way the system of government that prevailed in the country it is said that this act only tried to bury the dead horse and did not bring any substantial change in the governance in the country and thereafter so to seek cooperation of the indians in the administration of their country in the aftermath of revolt of 1857 three acts were passed which were the indian council act of 1861 then indian council act of 1892 and then the indian council act of 1909 because the british government realized that now on the ruling or governance of the country is not possible without incorporating indians into it because indians were very much annoyed and with the company rule so they passed indian council act of 1861 in this it provided that the viceroy should nominate some indians as non official members of his expanded council and in 1862 lord canning who was then viceroy nominated three indians to his legislative council they were the raja of banaras the maharaja of patiala and sir dinkar rao this act also initiated the process of decentralization by restoring the legislative powers to bombay and madras presidencies see we have seen that in the regulating act of 1773 the governors of bombay and madras were made subordinate to the governor of or governor general of bengal while in 18 1833 charter act governor of bombay and governor of madras lost their legislative powers but now with the passage of this indian council act of 1861 legislative powers of governors of bombay and madras was restored and process of decentralization started as i told it thus reversed the centralizing tendency of regulating act of 1773 and 1833 charter act it also provided for the establishment of new legislative councils for bengal northwest frontier province and punjab so legislative councils for these three provinces were created in the year of 1862 1866 and 1897 respectively later on it also gave recognition to the portfolio system now what is portfolio system see portfolio system is the allocation of different departments to different ministers for instance at present we have different ministries for instance ministry of environment ministry of agriculture ministry of rural development so different departments are given to different ministers so at that time also portfolio system was there and it was introduced by lord canning who was the first viceroy of india and this system was introduced in the year of 1859 and it got approval by this indian council act of 1861 this act also empowered the viceroy to make rules and orders for more convenient transaction of business in the council this act empowered the viceroy to issue ordinances without the concurrence of legislative council during an emergency at present the president has similar powers to issue ordinances which will be valid for 6 months during an emergency now came the indian council act of 1892 you must remember the years of all the council acts we have seen indian council act of 1861 now we are seeing indian council act of 1892 in this several features were incorporated for instance it it increased the number of additional non official members in the central as well as provincial legislative councils however it still maintained the official majority in them for instance if this is the legislative council majority of them were officials and non officials members were in minority so that they did not have any voice in the passes or taking of any strong decisions it also gave legislative council the powers of discussing the budget however budget could not be voted upon budget could be discussed but it could not be voted upon at present all the mps have power to vote upon the budget on the passage of budget but at that time it only provided the power to discuss the budget but not to vote the act also made a limited and indirect provisions for the use of elections in filling up some of the non official seats both in central and provincial legislative councils remember that it only made an attempt and that too was limited attempt for an indirect provision of use of elections however in this act we found no where the use of the term election so if they ask question that which was the first act 
which took a step to introduce elections so it was indian council act of 1892 however the term elections has been no nowhere used in this act now let's move to the indian council act of 1909 see indian council act of 1909 was also called as morley minto reforms why it was also called as morley minto reforms because it was named after morley who was the then secretary of state for india while minto or lord minto was the viceroy or the then viceroy of india remember morley was secretary of state and minto was viceroy so it was termed as morley minto reforms and the number of members in the central legislative council was raised from 16 to 60 by this indian council act of 1909 and the number of members in the provincial legislative council was not uniform and this act retained the official majority in the central legislative council however this act allowed the provincial legislative councils to have non official majority so one thing we have to notice here that there were gradual developments in terms of political rights for the indians in the colonial rule and the day or ultimately subsequently the time came when we were allowed to formulate our own constituent assembly which formulated enacted adopted our own constitution so it was a big achievement for indians and it allowed members of legislative council to ask supplementary questions move resolutions on the budget so in the last council act of 1892 only discussion of budget was allowed and single question was allowed no supplementary questions were allowed however in this act supplementary questions were also allowed it also provided for the first time for the inclusion of indian in the executive councils of the viceroy and the governors so satendra prasad sinha became the first indian to join the viceroy's executive council he was appointed as a law member remember the name very important satendra prasad sinha was the first indian to join the viceroy executive council as law member this act also introduced the concept of separate electorate under this muslim members were to be elected only by muslim voters so britishers try to sow the seed of communalism in indian masses and this was the beginning of it and thus lord minto is termed as father of communal electorate remember lord minto is termed as father of communal electorate as he introduced the concept of separate electorate next it provided for the separate representation of presidency corporation chambers of commerce universities and zamindars as well now we will see government of india act 1919 so government of india act 1919 is also called as montague james ford reform again why it is called as montague james ford reform because montague was the then secretary of state for india and james ford or lord james ford was the then viceroy of india and this act came into force in the year of 1921 this act separated the central and provincial subjects and this provincial subjects were further divided into two parts which were called as transferred and reserved now you are going to understand one very important concept this will be relevant for your modern history chapters as well as well as for your polity portion let's see this provincial subjects were divided into transferred and reserved further this transfer subjects were to be administered by governor with the aid of ministers who were responsible to the legislative councils see as we have till now seen that there were two types of members in legislative council one was the non official and the other was official non officials were mainly indians and officials were mainly britishers who were appointed by the british government so the transfer subject as the name itself suggest were those subjects which were transferred to those members of legislative councils who were indians and what were those subjects so it included local self government education public health public works agriculture forest and fisheries so pity subjects were given to indian members of legislative councils and they too will have to responsible to the legislative council and the reserve subjects was reserved with those members who were officials and they were britishers and they were not to be responsible to the legislative councils this was the key to remember here in the reserve subjects the subject matter was transferred to those members who were officials and they were not to be responsible to the legislative councils however in transfer subjects indian members were to be responsible to legislative councils 
so in reserved subjects all the important subject matters were kept this included law and order justice the police land revenue and irrigation so think once that agriculture as a subject was given to indian members while irrigation as a subject was reserved with the british members so how can indian members can give better outputs without having irrigation in their own hands and this system was called as diarchy or called as double rule double rule here means on the one hand executive members who were britishers and officials were ruling on the other executive members who were indians and they were to be responsible to legislative councils were ruling so subject matter was divided between two executive or two different types of executive the first one was official another was non official moreover this act introduced for the first time bicameralism and direct election now here you have to appreciate this difference that the direct election was introduced by the government of india act 1919 only however elements of indirect election was introduced in the year of indian council act of 1892 itself i hope you will remember this two differences and here the term election was used for the first time however in 1892 the term election was not used itself and the majority of members of both the houses were chosen by direct elections from there on and it separated for the first time provincial budgets from the central budgets and authorized the provincial legislatures to enact their own budgets this act also provided for the establishment of public service commission hence central public service commission was created in the year of 1926 which worked for the recruitment of civil servants and this act also required that three of the six members of the viceroy executive council other than commander in chief were to be indian so commander in chief were to be britishers and three members out of total six can be indian but now as an further attempt to divide the indian society they provided separate electorate to not only muslims but extended it to six indian christians anglo indians and europeans so they were just trying to use the fears of minority in their hearts later on it granted franchise to a limited number of people on the basis of property tax education so at present we have right to property without any qualification everyone who is above the age of 18 has the voting right in india now but at that time this act of 1919 provided franchise that is voting rights only to a limited number of people that too it was based on property tax and education so a person having a fixed amount of property and is paying a fixed amount of tax and is educated up to an level can only be qualified to be voter according to this act this act provided for the appointment of a statutory commission to inquire into and report on its working after 10 years of its coming into the force so this act had a provision for the appointment of a committee after completion of 10 years of this act to look into the implementation of this act and for the requirement of further amendments into this act however a committee was appointed called as simon commission 2 years before that was in november 1927 itself why because elections were due in britain so simon commission was appointed and it gave several recommendations some recommendations were accepted some were not and further government of india act 1935 was passed so now we are going to see provisions of government of india act 1935 but before that if you have not liked the video yet do like it share the video with your friends and loved ones support the channel to grow every day so now let's see provisions of government of india act 1935 this act provided for the establishment of an all india federation consisting of provinces and princely states as units this act divided the powers between center and units in terms of three lists so what were these three lists these were federal list provincial list and concurrent list we have discussed many times three lists in our daily current affairs videos so you must be aware of so this concept was included in india in the year of 1935 itself that was by government of india act 1935 so it was federal list which which was for the center exclusively and it had 59 items in it items here means subjects and provincial list which was for the provinces had 54 items while concurrent list 
had 36 items so this concurrently was the list of subjects where both center as well as provinces can pass laws then residuary powers were left with the viceroy only later on it abolished diarchy in the provinces so we have already discussed what is diarchy diarchy was means double rule or rule of two that was ruled by two executives one executive was responsible to the legislative council another executive was not at all responsible to the executive councils and those who were not responsible had the reserve subject thus it abolished diarchy and introduced provincial autonomy however though provincial autonomy is necessary autonomy and powers with the states at present and decentralization devolution of powers are necessary in a federal system however intentions of british government was not clean here they were trying to divide india into several parts and moreover the act introduced responsible governments in provinces that was governor was to act with the advice of ministers responsible to the provincial legislature so they were trying to introduce responsible governments in provinces but not at the central level it introduced bicameralism in six out of 11 provinces so bicameralism was introduced in the provinces of bengal bombay madras bihar assam united province so this were became bicameralism they had legislative council which was the upper house and then legislative assembly which was the lower house so lower house at present we have lok sabha upper house we have at present raj sabha so many provisions are being taken in the constitution from government of india act 1935 we will see later on it and this act also extended franchise to about 10% of the total population also it provided for the establishment of federal public service commission see the difference of word here in 1919 government of india act it provided for the establishment of central public service commission while this act is providing for establishment of federal public service commission provincial public service commission and joint public service commission for two or more provinces so for two or more provinces if they are willing to employ and recruit civil servants who can work jointly in both the states or both the provinces for that joint public service commission was to be established for a particular province provincial public service commission was to be appointed and for entire india level federal public service commission was to be appointed and it also provided for the establishment of reserve bank of india also it provided for the establishment of federal court which was set up in the year of 1937 so don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and loved ones subscribe to this channel press the bell icon follow our daily current affairs videos as well wait for the upcoming video until then stay at your home stay safe and thanks a lot